Hi, I'm Ken Gutman, Superintendent of Wild Lake Schools. Mrs. Terry Lass, Assistant Superintendent of Business Services, is with me today to help explain what bonds are, how they work. As a school district serving nearly 14,000 students in 23 buildings, we have no shortage of infrastructure needs. Just as our homes require a tremendous amount of maintenance and upkeep, so too do the many buildings in the school district. A homeowner may face the need to replace a roof, a furnace, appliances, or windows. Similarly, the needs of our 23 buildings can be immense. It's estimated that in order to properly maintain our buildings, we should spend $16 million every year. We're really fortunate that our community has continued to support our sinking fund, but this generates only about two to two and a half million dollars a year. That's only 10 to 15 percent of what we should spend. Limited funds mean that maintenance is delayed and many things are not able to be done. Mrs. Les, please share what options the school district has to cover these significant costs. Mr. Gutman, because we do not have any extra operating revenue, really the only available option is to borrow. Just like you might obtain a mortgage to purchase a home, a well, school district uses a bond to borrow the money needed for large projects. This allows us to pay for them over a period of time. In order to issue bonds, a school district must go to its community. Can you please talk about this requirement? Bonds are paid off by way of property tax revenue generated through a special debt millage. What that means is that all homeowners and business owners within our school district boundaries pay additional property taxes in order to cover the mortgage payments, if you will, on the bonds. Every year, I must calculate what our debt millage needs to be in order to raise enough revenue to pay the principal and interest payments that are due that year. Since all taxpayers in the community are subject to that debt millage, we must have the community support and vote of approval. We know we're not alone as virtually every district has similar needs and requires additional funds for infrastructure from time to time. This chart shows the debt millage rates of many of our neighboring school districts. This is also not the first time we've borrowed in this way. This chart shows the various debt issues that are currently outstanding. Will you please explain a little bit about what we see here? Each bond is a separate debt issue and we currently have five of them. The expiration date is the date that each of them will be paid off. Four of our five issues are refunding bonds, which means that over time we have refinanced previous bonds. This is similar to how you might refinance your home mortgage. Refinancing allows the district to pay off the loan quicker and at lower interest cost. The reason that this is important is because it is one of the factors that has positioned us well for going out for a new bond now. During recent community meetings, we shared that it is possible for us to borrow a large sum through a new bond and yet still provide a decrease in the debt millage. I think that's very confusing. How is that even possible? Well, Mr. Gutman, several factors working together have created an opportunity for us to do just that. Within five years, four of our five debt obligations will be paid off. As we approach paying them off, the total payments required decline. And as the overall principal and interest payments decline, the debt millage required to produce the necessary dollars also declines. In essence, we can charge the taxpayers less and still have enough money to make the required payments. The structure of the 2014 bond also plays a part. The timing of principal and interest payments were set up in a way to allow for a reduction over the next couple of years. This chart shows how principal and interest payments will be impacted over the next 10 years. We've been fortunate that taxable values in the community have stabilized and even grown. Does that also factor into why this is an opportune time? Yes, it does. Improving taxable values have assisted us in two ways. First, it has allowed us to put aside some savings within our debt funds. Keep in mind that money collected for bond payments can legally only be spent on bond payments. But we can take the savings to further pay off debt and buffer any tax increase that may have been necessary. In addition, growing taxable values means that the debt millage required to produce a given amount of income is less. All of these items come together to produce a period of opportunity where we can indeed go out for a sizable bond and still provide a tax decrease to our community. Thank you, Mrs. Lass. There's a lot of additional information on our district website. We'll have community meetings at all of our schools and plenty of opportunities to ask questions about this bond initiative. Thank you for your interest. We look forward to interacting with you with this entire community to ensure that everyone is aware of this community opportunity.